The children of the sky and the mountains salute you. There are those who seek erratically to find. They pursue for the moment under the spurs of desire for God that is not always born of a real hunger for him, but sometimes manifests because beings in the world are pained by the world. In their pain and retreat from reality, they seek the spiritual path. The light welcomes all, for man was born from light, and to light he must return. But there is no immediacy about it all. The magnet of the divine radiance calls to all children to return. The few respond. Many times the few ask themselves this question, where are the many? They gaze upon the many in their busyness and their elusiveness, and they ponder why they do not respond to the call of the divine magnet. The mighty God-presence 
the mighty I am presence, the beingness of eternality speaks softly to the heart through many media. Nature, arrayed in multicolored robes, beckons. Some attribute a quality of separation to nature, as though nature were a thing come apart from God. Nature and self and all aspects of life are one with God, for it is impossible to separate anything that exists from Him. Yet, for all practical purposes, humanity today may as well be a part for the minute value that comes to them, clouded as they are with other thoughts and visions of separation. The Brotherhood beckons not only to the pilgrim, but to those rooted to their own selfishness to those ignorant in the mass consciousness to those separated through time and space to those to whom the Himalayas are a far off vision that they do not even hope to realize we cannot deny our love and the power of the temple of the blue lotus to those who have journeyed far. But the realities of our octave must be perceived by a supreme willingness summoned from the height and depth of the celestial pools of reality that are within yourselves. You have sought a vision of the master of the Himalayas. You have sought a vision of life in remote places. You have sought to enhance your own concept of reality. And so reality stands blazing before you. Open your eyes. Open your hearts. Drink in the soft radiance. Let it penetrate mind and heart. For who can gauge the gift of the masters of the Himalayas. Are these not always within your heart? Have they not always been within your heart? Will they not always be within your heart? Therefore, what is time but a fragile moment when you feel the pulsation or you sense the reality that is always there. The pursuers sometimes feel that they have been pursued. Let me say to you that life has given you freedom, and when you are prone to blame life, for failures, when you are prone to blame life, 
because you have not climbed the ladder to the height you seek, remember that it is never life that is to blame. When you cast out from yourselves the darkness that is there because of misqualification of life, you begin to clear the way for inner sight. And this comes in many subtle gradations. It is not just one specific and particular style. It is an ever-approaching reality and an ever-receding unreality. For as reality is born, so unreality dies. And the flame that you have sought to carry to the Himalayas is like a fragile flower whose perfume seems easily lost in a sudden breeze. Yet the world hungers, the little children hunger, the ignorant hunger. They thirst. They would fain smell this scent from the mountains, yet do not know it. The avenues are opening up through the centuries. It is as a crack in the great rocky wall where the celestial furnace, white hot, gives forth its cosmic breath. And now, as the gleams appear, as one sees the inner light radiating outward, one's hopes buoyed upward in newness of life, like shafts of beautiful light, pour out, and the soul is glad. There are many who are waiting to receive. Numberless are they to your minds and hearts, but to us each of them is a precious temple. And if they are a precious temple, are you not also who have come unto us that you might receive our light. The Himalayas release their blessings. The subtle radiance of the masters must not be lost. The gusts of your mind must not blow out the tiny flame. The peace and the power that you have sought is there now. And if we raise the curtain upon that reality and your heart smile and as the beating of the wings of the birds of the Holy Spirit are heard, as you feel the penetration of the light from above on high, Know that God draws nigh. And if God draws nigh in this moment, can he be not summoned again? And if again, then not summoned again and again, until by and by the pool so long dried up, the hungry, thirsty pool that men have turned into an abscess of fungus and emptiness and loneliness, suddenly once again feels the trickle, the soft warmth of the stream flowing from afar. And 
Down the hillside it comes into the hearts and minds made numb by the world's delusions to reveal and reveal and reveal again the tenderness of the eternal presence. You merge into oneness. You lose separate identities, but you gain the allness of reality. But when you return once again to the singular manifestations of individuality, surely then you can remain conscious of the oneness of the spirit. Unless you do, through free will, through humility, through a deep desire to drink of the fountain, of the lost word, of the vibrant chord, you will find yourselves ever the seeker, never found. But if you will simply listen and realize that the greatest masters here in the Himalayas have always found the realities of God in the simple and beautiful, then you will know that this God within you is here and there and everywhere. But you will sense in your journey to him that he is also journeying to you. For if man ascends the mountain, God descends the mountain to meet him. You are never alone to be crushed by defeat. You are always surrounded by the angels who bless the seeker. Your little eyes are sometimes tired and the eyelids fall and the mind sleeps, but the heart within beats on as distant drum beats and comes again and again to bring an awakening, a quickening, a tenderness, a fruitation of the spirit. And now, as your hearts are still filled with the maddening sounds of the world, as you realize its vastness, the multiplicity of forms, the montage of many colored pictures in the mind, will you realize how all can move in swiftness into the light and receive the washing of purification. The mighty word went forth and the mighty word lives. The brothers here understand the passions of the seeker. So many seek God out of pride. So many seek God out of curiosity. So many seek God out of fear. So many cringe from the world, the jagged peaks, the roughness of life. Seek God for love. Seek God for his radiant destiny that would draw you into a vortice of uplifting currents until you become all that God is. This is the highest honor you can pay him. And if I said nothing but just radiated this concept through your forms until they were vibrant with it, you would have enough. For while God is the word, while your presence is the word, the simple radiance of the world is composed of the spiritual vibrations. The spiritual vibrations are behind all the complexities of life and the origins of these complexities lie in the primary manifestations of God and the secondary manifestations of manifestation itself. 
Be not entrapped then in the web. Be free to float into the ethers until in the stillness of the white fire, in the stillness of the blue fire, of the heart of the lotus, the calm knowing of who you are penetrates you always, moves out into the world and conveys the touch of the blessings of the Himalayan masters to the world. This I would do. I would bring peace to you. This I would do to your brothers who are coming. This I would do to all, to each child of the heart of God. This we would do. This life would do. This shall be done. When it is up to you, it is up to you. I thank you. of the white fire pulsations from out the central sun. May we speak of this radiance which is as the tremendous strumming of a giant harp in perfect rhythm. May we speak of this white fire radiance that is the heartbeat of the eternal rushing forth majestically through space with concentric rings of light, pulsations followed by giant pulsations, waves of light sustaining radiance. Each of these waves is rushing forth into the universe and tremendously affecting life everywhere. This is the contact between the central sun and the periphery of existence. I am come tonight in order to create in you awareness of these higher octaves of light. I want you to be aware of the pulsations of the white fire radiance from the central sun. I want you to sense the quivering of cosmic energies from the cosmic bow in their mighty onrush toward perfection, in their determination to fulfill the destiny of the divine plan. Humanity, in their moments of doubt and fear, often struggle to assert themselves in a more positive way when they see negative conditions facing them. They recognize that they themselves have a responsibility to fend for themselves and to determine that they will become arbiters of their own destiny. Some among mankind 
you might almost call blessed ones clinging vines, for they continue to always cling to the skirts of the deity, and they always demand of the deity that the deity perform for them that which in many cases they are well able to perform for themselves. We are interested then in keeping the attention of humanity upon the divine presence, but we also want individuals to understand that the presence is sending forth every moment of every day and through every night these pulsations of light which you can attune with and actually channel through your world into those difficult conditions which you face for your own protection and thus become a self-sustaining center of cosmic reliance. There is nothing wrong with this. This is not an act of desecration. It is an act of consecration. It is an act for God that asserts to the entire universe that you are maturing and fulfilling your role of understanding the need to assert yourselves in directing your energies according to cosmic edicts. I do not say that humanity should never, in moments of great stress, call upon the deity, for it is always a great blessing to the one who calls, and it is also a magnificent act from the standpoint of Almighty God, who desires, mind you, to receive the love of his children, and this includes, of course, the calling for help. It is simply that we do not want the students to fail to understand that the greatest help that can ever come forth from your presence is that help which, when you receive it into your consciousness, also activates within the force field of the individual a special activity whereby he is able to direct his own individual life patterns, thus maintaining a sovereign God control over his own world. We want you to understand, however, that for the beginners, for the neophytes, for those who are just starting out on the path, do not hesitate to call upon us and upon your own God presence. And we also want to remind all that to call upon your God presence is also a special act of individual awareness whereby you can actually invoke self-reliance from the heart of your presence. Do you understand? We want the students to understand clearly that the presence is always ready to assist them in moments when they have these great needs, but we also want them to understand that there are enormous untapped resources in your causal body and also even within your physical coordinates. For you yourselves have in manifestation a precious treasure that has been received throughout the years from your presence, and this treasure is always available, providing you have not used it up. We want you to understand that very few people have used it up. In fact, to be truthful with you, very few people have properly used it. And therefore, we tonight would activate in you the awareness of the great cosmic potential which Almighty God and the Ascended Master's consciousness has conveyed to you through the years so that you might expand your light and become masters of your own destiny. Do you know what it means to be an Ascended Being? When you become an Ascended Being, you will find that more and more you will rely upon that which you have drawn forth, that momentum of service, that momentum of love, that momentum of power, and the ability to draw forth this power from God and from the universe precisely when you need it. I think sometimes that individuals have a tendency to feel that they must always call upon God or he might in some way feel that they are neglecting him. Let me assure you that the Father literally bursts with pride when he sees an individual, a son of God upon the planetary body, taking responsibility for their own lives. And this is the type of pride which I assure you is certainly a prize, for it gives a spirit of elation even to the Godhead 
to perceive that the young students are at last going beyond the fledgling stage and understanding their need to shore up the universe and to contribute creatively to the universe's expansion. This may seem at first to be an abrupt and new idea to you. Many of you probably have always thought of the universe and all of the plans of the universe which God has created as being a sort of a die, something that is stereotyped, stamped out, and firm. You have probably not thought too much about the idea that you yourselves could contribute to the actual expansion of the universe. But I assure you that this is true. I assure you that the flames and the powers of God which you have received are given to you in order to develop the entire universe. Some individuals at first may smile at this idea and say, why I cannot even manage my own life. How can I actually exert any influence upon the universe? Well, precious ones of the light, I want you to understand that you are already doing just that. Whenever there is a negative thought that passes through your consciousness, whenever you allow yourself to be used by emotional substance, at that precise moment, you are contributing negatively to the universe. You are pulling the universe down by that thought. Most of you have not actually thought too much about this, for somehow or other, when certain activities take place in your own world, you have a tendency to feel that you are an isolated and separate part of God, and therefore you are not really affecting anything. Precious ones of the light, this is not true. Each individual life stream upon the planetary body has a definite effect upon the whole body of the planet. And this is also true of the great globe with its pulsating light radiance that actually consists of all things vibrating everywhere. Do you see then how that you can contribute positively to the universe by turning your attention to your great divine God presence and recognizing that you ought to also pay your cosmic taxes by sending forth a radiance to God in gratitude for all that he has given to you. The Father expects that mankind should understand that one day they will have a very real hand in the evolution of the planetary body and even the solar system itself will come under their direction. And eventually, of course, the universe, the galaxy, and the entire cosmos. We are actually so happy about the fact that the young students are developing their faith in the laws of nature and the laws of God and understanding that they are really a very vital part of all this universal consciousness on which humanity depends. One day you will also understand that as your minds become more enlivened by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can become a part of the answers to prayer for those lesser evolved beings upon the planet. And God can use your consciousness and manifestation for the satisfaction of human needs. Isn't this a wonderful thing when you actually stop to think about it, precious ones of the light? Isn't it wonderful that this King of Kings, this majestic God of Gods, your own mighty I Am Presence, is so willing to give you a power of direction in the affairs of this very universe? Do you think in your own hearts then today that you are justifying all that God Himself is placing in you of a vital faith? Do you think that you deserve to have God place this faith in you? Well, precious ones, I do. I think that God himself is completely justified in doing so, for he knows exactly of what substance you are made in your inward parts. And he understands completely how that the powers of darkness in the world, the negative powers in the world, actually have no power. They will one day cease to be all of the dark, misqualified energy and substance from that realm will be completely set free to be returned to the great central sun for repolarization. And then you see, no evil condition can exist anywhere. Will that not be a wonderful day? Will you then recognize that you have a responsibility tonight to let go of all negatively qualified substance that you have ever held in your world? to call your own divine presence and say, Father, I want you to take this energy back to the central sun for repolarization. Strip it 
of all of its negative qualifications and see to it that I am forgiven in every way for my misuse of that energy. See that everyone that has been wronged by it everywhere is also set free so that the entire chain of causation becomes a magnificent cosmic firecracker to celebrate for all humanity the liberation of humanity from all of these darkening conditions which they have imposed upon life. Now I know that some of you may say to yourself from time to time, the great divine director seems actually to be somewhat of a playboy. For you may say to yourselves, he plays around with words. And as he plays around with words, we wonder sometimes just exactly what he is trying to accomplish by all of this activity with words. I tell you, blessed ones, the main thing I am interested in is having your attention upon your presence and upon me long enough so that I can actually do something for you that will help those inward parts of your life that you do not see, that iceberg so deeply buried and referred to as the subconscious being of man. Over the span of the years and your past lifetime, many of you have garnered from life undesirable thought forms, ideas of impurity, ideas of impiety, ideas of unrighteousness. And you have accumulated these ideas and they have piled up just like so much rubbish in your backyards, in your basements, in even your attics, blessed one. Sometimes we have actually commented jokingly to ourselves, it would be a good idea if we had a fire when we have looked at these conditions. We have said to ourselves, the only reason we don't want a fire is we don't want to burn the house down before the individual has fireproofed it. We want you to understand then that there is a very real need for the students to recognize and understand that we are practical men of the spirit, that whereas we are capable of writing what you might call poetic writings, while we are capable of writing great devotional works, we also have a very real sense of humor, for we understand how that many of the rigid conditions of life that are imposed upon you are themselves very serious to you at times. And when you say to yourself, now this is a serious condition, I assure you that we have watched again and again while your blessed body elemental has actually quailed and sometimes nearly taken you out of the body. This has been brought about because fear has entered into your world and you have actually thought that you were going to die when nothing more or less was going to happen except a momentary palpitation of the heart because your blessed nerves were somehow or other functioning in a fear vibration. We want you to understand that all of these fear vibrations, all of these negative conditions have to be cast into the violet flame if you are going to know your freedom. Do you think that you can properly decree or properly function in any way along the spiritual path so long as you are entertaining negative thoughts and ideas of your own passing? I assure you, blessed ones, that if you were to pass, it could very easily be and probably would be as easily done as walking from one room into another. It is not such a strange thing. You have in past lives again and again passed through the doorway of death. And I assure you that the experiences of life are often a great deal more bitter than the experiences of passing away. Let me say to all of you then that you ought to have no fear of death, no fear of the future, no fear of tomorrow whatsoever. Have a reasonable prudence in its place. Look to manage your own affairs in such a way that the Ascended Masters can truly say to one another, that individual really deserves our attention. They have done their best to outwork their destiny. They have tried to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling, and I actually believe that with a little assistance from us, perhaps just a little cosmic nudge or a push, they will make it all the way to their victory. We want you to understand then that this is what we have in mind. We have in mind working hand and glove with you. We want to fit together with you and assist you in every way we can, even though our business may seem to the minds of most of you to be a very high and holy business. We may seem to vibrate in octaves so far above your head that you sometimes do not even believe that you can climb to our octave in imagination. Yet I assure you that the actual distance is very, very short. You can simply reach our octave by a thought. And when that thought becomes devotional in its nature, desiring to pour itself out into the universe and assist humanity in their evolution toward God, I assure you that a cosmic grant 
is often given with alacrity by the karmic board, and you are then able to find that that energy which you have called for is forthcoming because the karmic board's decrees are acted upon almost in the instant. Now, precious ones, and I'm speaking only to two or three people that are in the midst, I want you to relax completely. I want you to relax your mind. I want you to relax your heart. I want you to relax your entire consciousness and realize that God knows all about your problems. I want you to realize that he himself has always intended from the very beginning to assist you to work out those very problems you are now holding in your mind and consciousness. I want you to know that you yourselves, time on time again, have set up counter interferences, counter blocks to the manifestation of the very release you seek. Therefore, I urge you tonight to set up a condition in your consciousness whereby you can relax, whereby you can release yourself from any element of fear and understand that that fear vibration will not take you anywhere except the wrong place. In fact, I think it is almost guaranteed that if you hold it long enough, you will have exactly the condition manifesting that you are now fearing. Therefore, I urge upon you that you release yourselves immediately from that condition by turning to the light of your God presence and saying, Beloved, mighty I am presence, you take command of my life. You take command of my affairs. You give me your direction. You show me which way to go. You are the light of my life. You are the power that actually sent me forth into physical manifestation. You are the power that has always existed and will right now and forever take command of my world if I will only release myself into your loving care. Do just that, precious ones, and see the great ease that will come into your feeling world. Actually feel the great passion of God and just how happy you will make him because you are now turning to him in this particular problem. Now, I do not contradict myself in what I say. I assure you that there is a time when you ought to recognize that you yourselves need that additional boost that comes by some special assistance from the presence. But after you have made the call, you should understand immediately that God has already answered it. And when the answer comes forth, you should actually be prepared to accept the answer and then do your part to complete your end of the bargain. This is always correct. It is right action. It is the action of cosmic law. It is the action of cosmic fulfillment. Now, beloved Moria is preparing to meet in India, with you spiritually, in this great pilgrimage that some of you are making. He has assured me that great things are in store for you if you will keep your hearts and minds open to the light, if you will only recognize that the light is able to supply all your needs, and not only your needs and the needs of your blessed country, America, but also the needs of India. For India, precious ones, is indeed the head, even as America is the heart, of the great white brotherhood action in the world. We want you then to understand that there is a definite activity to be formed between India and America, regardless of any human personalities that have sought to intrude their thoughts about this condition. We want you to understand that there is a very special activity between America and India, which when it is formulated can actually be a great deterrent to the Chinese communists in their contemplated actions of producing misery for humanity by actually bursting the bonds that presently hold them down, the bonds of limitation, and seeking to rush madly out with their population into the other parts of the world for reasons of domination. We want you to understand this. We want you to reckon with all of the factors that are involved in your life, but do not reckon with it to the point where it becomes a worry to your blessed mind. Understand that every time it becomes a worry, it actually adds to the accumulated weight of negative conditions in the world. But just the moment that you release yourselves into the hands of your loving God presence, right then and there, the presence can take command. And precious ones of the light, when the presence takes command, a beautiful thing happens. A cosmic miracle of cosmic joy rushes through your heart, and you know on the instant that God will produce in your lives the answers to the best of your ability. Precious ones, limitation is never the forte of God. He is unlimited. His power is unlimited. Limitation always occurs in your own world. 
And quite naturally, if one of you were to ask the Father to give you all of the wealth in the universe, all of the wealth in the world, do you think that this would be exactly right? Would therefore the law not be completely correct in stopping through limitation the actual manifestation of such a wish? You see, precious ones of the light, cosmic law is always acting. And when individuals sometimes set up interfering patterns in the flow of the law, they experience great difficulty, which they do not realize directly stems from their own thought processes and emotional processes. If you will only learn this lesson, I assure you that in the future we will be able to avoid some of the conditions for you that at the present time are so very difficult because of your own consciousness. Will you then renovate your consciousness tonight by turning your consciousness into the light and actually washing your underwear, so to speak, in the blessed fountain of cosmic light energy which is rushing forth? Do you understand why I am saying it in this way? It is because I actually want you to feel a smile in your heart and have a smile upon your face. I want you to relax in this time of world tension. I want you to understand that God still has the trump hand, the upper hand over all conditions. And whereas man may propose, God always in the final end disposes according to the disposition of his mighty law. Those of you who have sought healing and sometimes wonder just why the healing has not been forthcoming on the instant, please understand that the law is probably even now responding to your request in a manner far swifter than you yourselves actually deserve. And I do not say this because I wish to create an attitude of self-condemnation in you. I say it simply because it is true and to bring you the comfort of the law. Even now, there has been a step up in the radiation of the ascended masters to this planet. And we expect that the Easter momentum generated in this class and generated also in other activities of a religious nature upon the planet shall be gathered together and directed by the lords of karma to assist humanity all the way to the 4th of July. Is this not actually a blessed turning of the wheel of the year? A quarter of the year is then going to be served by the energies of a few days given to the light. I tell you, humanity are blessed, but there will be certain problems occurring during this period. The present unrest in labor is an agitation of vile forces in the astral realm, which must be brought under control and subdued. If you will only pray for the beloved messengers, I assure you that they will do all in their power through special methods given unto them to clear the way for the children of light and to evoke the forces of light in such a manner that all of you will experience in the coming months a tremendous upliftment which you have called for. I want you then to understand that there will be a routine momentum which you will be expected to observe. There will be a routine momentum of action a cosmic faithfulness on your part, which the great law always requires. Will you assure me tonight that you will do your part by answering the calls of the ascended host and holding faithfully to that necessary and required cosmic momentum, even in those moments when you may not feel exactly like doing it? I am honored by your attention, blessed one. And I assure you of our cooperation, even as you have offered yours. Won't you please be seated? And now, precious one, a specific activity of blessing has been authorized by the Lords of Karma. This can be called a wave offering. And I am going to ask you to do a childlike gesture, a simple little thing which some of you, like the king of Syria long ago, may actually question. But it does not matter if you will only do it, for I have asked you to do it, and my word will always be fulfilled. I ask you then to offer to God a wave offering. I ask you, at a given signal, to raise both your hands, not as high into the air as you can, but perhaps just a little above the shoulders, and then wave your hands back and forth from the left to the right as a gesture of love to God on high and to the ascended masters signifying that you yourselves have that faith, that vital faith in your own consciousness 
and that you are willing, if you do not feel it or have it, to receive it. If you will do this, I assure you that the angels from higher octaves will bless you and you will certainly eventually receive the blessing that is given forth tonight. We hope to permeate your consciousness, to penetrate your consciousness, to inspire you and infuse you with our love and the love of the law. But just exactly what takes place in each individual force field will depend upon your attitude and the correct amount of faith that you can muster. Will you then prepare yourselves to receive our blessing? We suggest that all of you together in rhythm, paying homage to God in memory of the great Palm Sunday past, will say Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna three times as we lead you. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Hosanna, 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 Ho, 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 Ho. Ho, 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 Let not your hearts now be troubled, nor be afraid. But in the days ahead, let your faith mount up as on eagle wings. We must, regardless of the recalcitrance of humanity, we must, regardless of their fears and the conditions that are being injected, literally injected into humanity, we must raise them. This can be done. An act of faith will help you to perform it. Together we shall do it. Do you know, precious ones, when I am saying this unto you, that there are certain forces upon this planet that are actually projecting images of daggers into this force field because these forces of shadowed substance do not want these conditions of upliftment for humanity to occur? Do you know that the thought form of numberless daggers is being projected? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. I am going to do something about it. I am going to create a magnificent fohotic flame, and I am going to blaze it through this entire building and sweep this building clear of it, and I tell you, wherever that activity is emanating from, it shall return to them with a power of 10,000 times 10,000. And I tell you that I will make an edict, and that edict is that the power of the light and the power of God shall be supreme, and that power is love and love alone, and that love shall fulfill the victory of the light. And I assure you that humanity who engage in a practice of black magic and witchcraft upon this planet will one day rue the day that they did it. But I assure you that I will hold up the sons of light and the daughters of light, and they shall not fail to love in all my holy mountain. Be at peace.
and know that I am is God. Know that your I am presence will keep you blessed. Know that in your I am presence is perfect rest. I thank you and I salute the God within you.
offers the little children to come unto me. Who are the little children of this age? Are they not all humanity? For do not those of mature years also have hurts that need to be mended? Do not all mankind feel themselves at one time or another to be little children as they stand in awe of the pageantry of creation? As the light of the stars is contemplated, as the power of infinite love is thought upon, the wisest among men bow their heads in inward silence and respect for the vastness of cosmos. But there is a concern from the farthest star in space to the tiniest heart that the fullness of development of mercy of wisdom of the pathway of peace would manifest in the consciousness with its balm intended to give to each one the energy and the purpose for ordered service. How the world hungers today after righteousness. How they seek to be filled. Yet the marketplaces of the world have not provided the spiritual manna the souls crave. And men and women go away empty. They do not have in their hands or hearts the love which they seek, for it is not in the stalls. It is not upon the shelves. It is not recorded in the places where men and women search for it. Emptiness and vacancy is there. And they go away hungry and tired. Now, in the name of the spiritual hierarchy, I speak for every master of wisdom, for every one of the blessed masters who serve with me the spiritual needs of humanity. Let us turn within. Let us turn within to the great God flame, to the pulsing flame of the resurrection. Let us understand that the electronic essence of the flame of the resurrection that raised me from the land of shadows long ago in the garden tomb can also raise humanity today and the family of nations into a state of golden age beauty. The world has too long been upon the sorrowful way. They have too long bowed down their heads toward the earth in a state of abjection, in a state of hopelessness and filled with doubt. Now, in this moment in the history of mankind, when so much depends upon the action of a moment, we urge upon your hearts the blessed acceptance of the perfection of your divinity, the perfection of your divinity is of God. 
it is gentle at times, and then again it thunders. But the flame of the resurrection does not thunder. The flame of the resurrection is a slow white fire radiance that begins as in the center of a flower and winds outward in a centripetal action. Do you understand then that every part of the being of man should be bathed with the flame of the resurrection? Will you understand then that as I came to you today, the ascended hosts in higher octaves of light did prepare a special gift to encircle the world with. And this special gift is the release of the tangible flame of the resurrection into your hearts, minds, and beings that you might carry it to all parts of the world and that those of you who are temporarily rooted to one place as it were should understand that by the power of Christ's love for humanity you can shower it out upon the world in every part thereof. You can answer the call of the children of God in far off Russia, in China, the land of Chin. You can answer the call to the islands of the sea. You can be a part of hierarchy's movement and outward flow of the flame of the resurrection because you are joint heirs with me of our Father's kingdom. The mantle of the light of the universal Christ expands throughout the world. The mantle of the universal Christ showers down its light rays upon every town, every little sleepy village, every hamlet. For the ministering angels that came with me this day as you celebrate the feast of the resurrection, are blessing humanity and supplying a much needed release. The parched ground begins then to drink up the wondrous shower of the latter rain of cosmic freedom. For the same flame of the resurrection that raised me from the dead, from the land of the not living to the land of the living, lives today to expand the consciousness of all mankind until they can drink deeply of the draught of the water of life. And as they do so, they can understand that the love of the great source is to pour out his grace everywhere, through every orifice, through every opening, through every rock, through every hillside, through each blade of grass, through each little flower, many of which are tinkling as it were, as little bells upon the stalk blown by the wind and guarded by elemental life so sacred and dear. I come to you then because I know that the time is short and only the flame of the resurrection can unite hearts. Only the flame of the resurrection can awaken a world sleeping in the darkness of despair and chaos, reeling as the world is now from numbing blow after numbing blow, perceiving the spirit of despot that has gone out into the world as Antichrist in order to create deceit, fear, and doubt in the minds of men. We call to the blue flame angels of light to descend 
unto the planetary body and to perform their wondrous action, an action of the sacred fire law, whereby a humanity who love the laws of God, who love the truth but are often denied it, can find themselves cut free from those despairing elements of consciousness which are so unlike the consciousness I have, which are so unlike the consciousness I seek to convey. For I would convey a spark, radiant in all of the fullness of the eternal flame. Within each heart, I would scatter all that I have with me as a sower who went forth to sow. To sow, then, the flame, to sow the seeds of flame everywhere, to make men aware of the reality of the electronic essence of the sacred fire, to let all understand that the heart of the individual man, each monad, is indeed a heart's altar where love can flourish, where cosmic communion can occur, where awareness of God can be breathed into the nostrils of man, that now once again, as a spiritual renaissance, seeks to take shape in the world of form and to make all communicants of its mighty power, we can successfully weld together upon the planetary body a magnificent God-free body of servers who will understand the needs of mankind that must be met, for we go forth to raise the little children into the consciousness of cosmic reality. And as we do, we say, put away your toys that themselves are only part of a ceaseless round of play, whereby individuals are always engaged in the activity of entertainment in that which is known as amusement. We are aware of the needs of humanity for recreative functions, but we want all to understand that there must be balance in all things. Humanity should recognize then that they can, by offering their hearts to God, create a chalice of love, a grail, whereby we can pour in communion with his light for the development of the emerging consciousness until it can no longer be centered around the miracle of self which is surrounded now by the opacities and densities of life. But the miracle of self can break, can shatter the densities of the tomb of matter that has created encroachment upon the beauty and perfection of the law and will enable the children of men to breathe free once again the air of freedom, freedom from the smog of delusion, freedom from the chaos that requires healing and a great enablement that will enable once again to occur the miracle of the creation of King Solomon's temple, the building of the great cosmic living stones in one magnificent pyramid of beauty where the capstone can indeed crown the climbing of this age toward its perfectionment and its own coming of age. We stand then as arbiters of the destiny of man to enfold humanity in its garments of Christ victory. We stand then as servants of the eye of God to create those ordinate perfections in the consciousness that will destroy the inordinate manifestations of darkness that have blighted the fruit upon the vine and have caused humanity to become children of shadow and darkness and shame and reproach. We would see the world once again garlanded as in past golden ages with the fruits of the highest learning, the arts and sciences being involved with the cosmic law so that humanity could actually produce the young men and women who would seize the pinions of progress in their hands and decide that they would fill the roles in politics 
in science, in creative acts, and build a better civilization because they would understand that the kingdom of God is with men, residing within them, it also ought to manifest without. That which is within does manifest without. And because men today are filled with dead men's bones, with the renderings of imperfection from other epochs of time, it is essential that humanity should recognize these facts and not continue to perpetuate the psychic release into the world of form of all of the old matrices of imperfect creation and then see that the young of this age are exposed to these activities of darkness. I reference such works as the works of the Marquis de Sade. I reference such works as many of the pornographic renderings which today are being offered to the young people, many from the dark ages. I reference also the line drawings from medieval times that have within them the seeds of darkness and decay. We would create the matrix of perfect history. We would create the patterns of perfection from the old temples. We would restore the old landmarks of the spirit and we would build a perfect world without because there is already builded a perfect world within. God seeks to lower this in the great cosmic cloud of creative essence, which he seeks to surround mankind with. God seeks to lower this, and it is indeed to be perceived in the great seal of the United States. Humanity can understand then that as the cloud of perfection descends and the starry constellations are perceived as the great cosmic hierarchies of the true astrological configuration are brought into manifestation, then the hierarchies of Capricorn, the hierarchies of Sagittarius, and all of the twelve will indeed be able to produce the miracle of God perfectionment among mankind that will not make them a victim of their stars, but will make them a radiance of their stars. For the radiance of the stars of the birth sign will come into manifestation through the consciousness not as a banal activity of hindrance whereby men and women are afraid because of the karmic tamperings with the solar hierarchies of that which is coming upon them. In its place, we will bring into manifestation the radiance of the sacred fire whereby men can learn to govern their own karma and actually set it aside as easily as a child can take building blocks and build or destroy a building. When the karma is set aside by a personal activity, of the child of light who understands the need to do so in order that he may function momentarily for the cause of the elect, he will perceive that one day all of the karma that is set aside can be more easily balanced from higher octaves of light. This we are perfectly willing to have done, you understand, providing men will enter upon the path with such utter devotion toward the radiance that comes from the uttermost parts of the earth and the secret temples of the brotherhood into physical manifestation through your consciousness in order to teach you the law that you may become as a little child, humble and unafraid, facing the universe and life and perceiving that the goblet of life is filled with richness embroidered by the Holy Spirit and surrounded by a radiance of such celestial light as to afford all humanity not the hope of great sorrow, but the hope of great joy, a buoyant joy, that actually was captivated in the song that long ago rang over the Judean hillsides at my birth, celebrating then on my natal day the story of old glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill to men. This is the message of God. This is the message of liberation. This is the message of the flame of the resurrection. It is all one, for all feasts in their central ordinances manifest one divine idea, for they come from one source. Let men understand then that they are intended to garland the year and the years. They are intended to garland the life and the lives of all with a celestial radiance that enables men posited in one part of space 
to also have awareness of all. Men then can, through the power of the living Christ, drink deeply of the goblet of life. They can feel the passions of the resurrection flame burning within them now. And as they do, they can understand that he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. For no one who believes in me, that is in the power of the I am presence, the radiant power that declared, I am the resurrection and the life, can ever die. But he will always create those new spatial spires, those new spatial spirals, which are ever ascendant in consciousness and in manifestation, which enable men to make each life nobler than the last, beautiful to behold before one's peers, and beautiful to behold before the elect. We then of the house of David, we then of the radiance of Abraham, we then of the priesthood of Melchizedek, we who are children of the light and of the sacred fire, we who are the elder brothers and guardians of the race say, take heed this day what ye do, and remember that that which I speak to thee this day is also spoken to thee every day of thy life. It is this, the Lord is with thee. If thou doest well, then behold, God is with thee forever. And if thou doest ill, then behold, that illness which thou doest, that illness which thou createst, will stand one day to be redeemed by thyself. For all who create shadow and ignorance, all who create chaos and misery, will one day be required by the law to redeem each iota of it, each atom of it. For it has been said long ago that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And I say to you today that my word shall live even as it lives in you. In those who are perfect, it lives in you to amplify your perfection. For every one that hath shall more be added unto him, and to he that hath not shall be taken away that which he hath. Therefore those who have not of my perfection or a place in their heart for my perfection, then you see what they already have shall be taken away and lost unto them. This is the law acting. Over it no man has the power to govern, for even God himself would not govern the activity of the law of life. For the law of life is straight and narrow, and few there be that find it. Yet hope goeth forth to all, for all have within themselves this hope, if they will understand that by the acceptance of the resurrection flame, they can now today rekindle once again the divine sense whereby the flowers are raised each spring into radiant manifestation. The divine sense whereby all shadows and shadow thoughts can be transmuted into thoughts of righteousness. They will understand then that all fear can vanish away and become a part of the night consciousness, separate from humanity. And in its place, the light and the beauty of our way of life will provide a highway of holiness upon which all may walk. I stand before you this day. I stand before you this day. I am, and I am, and I am, and because I am, ye are. I offer you the mantle flame that glows within my heart. I offer you its use in order to start the kindling of the resurrection flame within yourself. I offer you my mantle flame that you may use it for the glory of the weaving of the great solar deathless body which I have woven, which God has woven for me, that you may one day hear the soundless sound, the great rumbling which to mankind often seems to be the voice of thunder saying, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Oh, what joy there would be in heaven this day if all of you and all humanity could accept it, for it is offered, and when it is accepted, that is all that is necessary. But the acceptance seems to be a process of great order. Will you begin that process now by highly resolving within the depths of the temple of life within you, within your own consciousness and personality, that it is your will to turn and serve the light so that the light may serve you. For the sun shines behind my body. The sun 
the great solar radiance is passing through my flesh form, through that radiant heart of flesh which I am also manifesting. Do you understand that I did indeed ascend, carrying with me all the elements of my being? And so now they are transmuted into pure light. They are made of the sun radiance of the white fire core from the central sun. May I pour a little of this through your flesh body as I offer you my mantle flame? May I pour it through you now? And as I pour it through you now, will you drink deeply of the draught of that cosmic energy that it may perform within you an activity which God would also do, which he would willingly do for every avatar, for every son, for every daughter, for each one. For God so loved the world that all who believe upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. That which I declared long ago rings in truer tones today, for today it speaks to many more that they may understand that other sheep I have also which are not of that fold, but now ye are also these other sheep, Gentiles, who are becoming of the house of all that is real, Gentiles who are hearing today the word of life, the everlasting gospel declared to you. Come, my children, children of one father, enter into the righteousness of the Son principle. Enter into the righteousness of the law that affords all of you the blessedness of spinning for yourselves by cosmic decree the self-same seamless garment I wore and wear, for I wear it still. And now, blessed ones, when men are still casting lots for my garment, will you cast your lot in with me with the blessed assurance of the sacred law that all who give themselves to me and let the resurrection flame pulsate through them, not only today but forever, are assured immortality and power over death and hell. I say to you then, the law has brought to man the power of the kingdom, for I have the keys of death and I have the keys over all the powers of darkness in the pit, and I can free mankind so that he can arise out of the abyss, out of all darkness, out of all shadow, into the light. I can do it because it is God's will. I am the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. But in each one of you is that self-same image so that each of you can cry with me and declare in the fullness of faith, I am the only begotten Son of the Father. Will you then join me today in saying it with all of your hearts? I am the only begotten Son of the Father. I am the only begotten Son of the Father. I am the only begotten Son of the Father. May the flame of the resurrection that pulsed through me then pulse through thee, and as you feel it entering deeply into your heart, will you understand that if it is but a spark, it can expand until by and by it will command all of the densities in your land and person to bow down the knee to Almighty God that they may be free, each electron moving on to its appointed rounds, to carry your body swiftly and with dispatch into the higher octaves of light where you can reassemble it behind the cosmic cloud and know that for all eternity out of the light I come and I go wheresoever I will go for I am now and forever a child of universal intelligence creating magnificently. All that I touch is turned to the gold of cosmic illumination all that I am is filled with the infinite love and passion for freedom. I garland the world with hope. I bring forth the flowers of beauty. I clothe the lilies with their garments, and I clothe each one with the purity of the lilies. Hear ye then, O humanity, I will shake thee. Even I, the Lord thy God, will shake thee. Even I, the Christ, will shake thee and I will rule the earth. I will rule the earth by the power of light within each soul. I will rule the earth because I will shake each soul, and in my shaking I will remove all of the pebbles of darkness. 
I will transmute them as they stand as rubble before me, and my eyes are as a flame of fire, and I will blaze that fire from my eyes, and I will perceive the transmutative flame acting in each pebble, in all rubble, in all distorted and twisted concepts, and out of them I will bring forth law. I will also cause them to come forth pure, divested of all their negatively qualified energy, and I will pass them through the flame, and never shall the stain and darkness in the garments be any more. My eyes are as a flame of fire, my hair is white as wool, and there is a burning in my being, as I say to all substance, you are gods, I claim you for him this day. I claim all things for him. I say to darkness, never shalt thou be any more. Let the darkness flee away. Let the sun radiance remain. Let the purity stand forth. And let us separate the sheep from the goats. Let us make the great separation. Let us determine that we shall bring forth the challenge. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. If ye choose then, remember, it is not a time for turning back. Never shall you turn back. Never shall you turn back. Even though the sorest trial of life come before you, you shall go the way of every victor. You shall obtain victory over the grave, over all substance and over all energy. All corruption shall yield itself to you. For I am the invincible, cosmic Christ power of the resurrection flame that resurrects every atom of being from all of the tombs of matter and density in which it is dwelled. And I shall purify it, and I shall return it to the heart of the sun, and it shall come forth as a stainless, pure white garment of light with which you shall be clothed. And in this white garment you shall arise to meet me in the air, and you shall cast aside all your errors and all of your stains and all of your pains, and in the balm of hope you shall unite the heart of the world until the world victorious comes to that great grand unity down the grand galaxy and hall of the years to a state of perfection where the three in one agree and all things thereby become free and God is all and in all and darkness shall no more be for light and light alone shall enable all to see and as they see their imperfections exposed before them to view they shall cast them within the flame and the purifying essence shall array them in the glory, and the mantle flame which I gave them shall be a kindling that shall sweep their being, each atom, each electron, until all shall glow with the fire of release, and the world shall be purified by fire, and all things shall live in beauty, and the desire of God be manifest each day, each moment, and happiness shall sing in all, and the joy songs of the ages shall be fulfilled, the mission for which I came shall be fulfilled in all, self-willed in all, because all shall will it so, and all shall offer themselves unto me and unto God, and I shall bow my knee unto him, that God may be all in all. And behold, I make a new heaven and a new earth, for the former heaven and the former earth is passed away, and behold, all things are become new, bathed in the resurrection flame, in the essence of of the God intent. O Alpha and Omega, O Elohim, hearest thou me? Thou gavest me all power in heaven and earth. And I say, let us renew the covenant of dominion over the earth. Let us renew the covenant of discipleship in this new age. Let us create a holy circle of infinite love. And let none of them be lost that thou givest me, O Father, until they have finished their course and kept the faith. This I ask in thy name, O Father, and I know that thou hearest me now, and I know that thou hast always heard me. Ephrata, open the pathway then 
through the air and let the electric current, the swift blue current of light, descend. And evoke then the power of the resurrection spirit in all. Roll away the tombstone. Roll away the stone from the tomb of matter. And let the radiant Christ spring forth, the electrifying one. And let the flowers spring up wherever his feet do touch the hallowed ground. And let each one see themselves thusly, thus shall the renaissance of the golden age begin in the resurrection of the sons of God, in the restoration of the boundaries of the temple, in the building of the age to be. My peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not peace such as the world gives, give I, but the peace of the universal Christ. I am the resurrection and the life of all actions of righteousness, and my Father's kingdom shall flourish as you receive my life, as you drink into my life, as you give my life. Alia Merala Conisubabol Blatromonia Bale Consovobo Mizoala Curiae